2011, you see 4,600 jobs increasing to 204,000 uh, in 2015. Most of these jobs are going to be regional jobs. Uh, just for the pure fact that this jail play is going to be taking over most of eastern Ohio. Uh, so during one of the worst recessions we've had in the entire history of the United States, we are positioned to uh, actually have a positive job outlook, which is very important to this area and important to Ohio. Uh, as far as reinvestment revenues, we have seen a lot of leasing going on in the state of Ohio here recently, uh, especially in Guernsey County. Uh, just recently, I think about, I would say it was 55,000 to 60,000 acres of just leased. Um, so you're going to see about 34 million in exploration, development, midstream royalty, and lease expenditures. Uh, starting off with 246 million here in 2011, I think we're close to hitting that just in leasing here. Uh, State of Ohio, up to 14 billion by 2015. Now, when you have, uh, when you're discussing royalty and leasement expenditures, those are that's money that's going to be in this community. This is money that's going to be going throughout the farmers and landowners in these areas that uh, have typically been economically depressed areas. Uh, and a lot of this money will be spent around town, and you're going to see a lot of it going back to local governments, which uh, during this time we greatly need. Now, uh, as far as we're going to talk about the impact on Guernsey County. Uh, for a little history, the median income per capita here in Grinch County is $19,000. Median household income, you're looking at about $34,000. It's an unemployment rate of 9% uh, per uh, September, so I agree. With persons below poverty level at about 20.5%. Those are staggering numbers for any community, and those are uh, very staggering for Grinch County, but that has been what we've seen over here in Eastern Ohio. Uh, that has been pretty much the culture of uh, Appalachia, I should say. Now, um, as I say that, it takes about 75 jobs to take a well from planning to production. Uh, so this is, for each well, you're going to see about 75 jobs taken off for, I'm going to say, um, well, I think Muskegon County is looking at about 14 wells can be produced over the next year. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot of jobs just for that single, that single well. Uh, these are good paying jobs. And this money, this money will be spent in the local communities. Uh, you're going to have people on the drilling rigs coming in to the area, spending in hotels, spending in restaurants, spending in uh, local services as well. Uh, Why well, I mention that, uh, typical jobs at the drill site, you'll see the roughneck, the uh, roundabout, the tool pushers, the drillers, the motormen, and the barricans. Those are typical uh, jobs that everybody has always known to be associated with uh, oil and gas production. As I mentioned that, um, I just wanted to point out, Air Derrick operators, they make about $38,000 a year. Uh, the rotary drill operators, about $30,000. Uh, service unit operators, $28,000. Browse about about $64,000. As you can see along this uh, line right here, most of these are just on the job training. This does not take a bachelor's degree for the majority of these jobs, which is very important to this region. Uh, what we have here is we have this wave coming in of, uh, of jobs that in workforce development that we need done. Uh, luckily, they don't have to have a four-year degree, so we don't have to miss the window. We can take certificate programs like uh, Dr. Paul Brown has at, uh, at Maine State, or uh, certificate programs are going to be offered at vocational school. And uh, mix that with on the job training. These people will be making way above what you see in the median income for uh, Guernsey County, which is very huge, uh, especially during this economic time. As I mentioned, that other jobs in development that people don't really think about. Uh, you're going to have lease analysts, uh, lapping uh, land map technicians, accountants, and geoscience professionals. Uh, EHS advisors, engineer professionals, community relations, automotive uh, official technicians, and business development, uh, business development representatives. <coughs> these are jobs that are not typically thought of when you're discussing oil and gas drilling. But these are office jobs, and they're jobs in the field that are going to be, you know, in addition to what you see at these well. These are the production jobs, the jobs that are going to stick around for about 20 to 40 years. Uh, ancillary jobs in Pennsylvania. Uh, you are going to have a lot of jobs just with oil and gas production, but it's ancillary jobs that uh, are going to be uh, bouncing up here and there in, in eastern Ohio. With that, you have power generation, averaging about $108,000 a year. Uh, water and sewer line and construction, $64,000 a year. Uh, site preparation uh, contractors, $51,000 a year. Again, going back to what the median income for Guernsey County is, $19,000 per capita and thirty-four dollars per household. These are sad numbers. These are great numbers to see, and that's what's really going to turn around this area. Uh, local businesses, um, and that is another another aspect you have to look at. Hotels. Um, Commissioner Tom Laughlin uh, just wrote a great uh, editorial in yesterday's newspaper, uh, talking about what we've seen in the county already with shale exploration. 
And hotels, we have seen a huge uptick in business so far. Uh, restaurants, I've talked to Jim Carpenter over at the forum. They have seen uh, increased numbers and have one of the best years we've seen on record. Construction and excavation. Um, you can talk with uh, Bill Nicholas Ox and see what he has seen over uh, at Nicholas Ox Construction. And uh, they're, they're being bombarded with, uh, with nickel wires. Uh, trucking, same thing. You're going to see a lot of truckers. This is, trucking is going to be a huge uh, component of geo-exploration. CDLs, uh, you're going to see, uh, I'm going to say, Rock Center and the Brian Williams just did a piece on North Dakota here, oh, last week. And uh, CDLs are making $85,000 a year up there, and they don't have enough of them. If we can see that over here in Ohio, that would be huge. Uh, mechanics, uh, Miller's the Depot, just right up on the hill uh, across from the old park school. I uh, had a meeting with Chesapeake here a couple months ago. This guy came in. This was uh, I mean, in one car, Blue Depot, just in and out. The guy came in and said, how would you like to fix, uh, fix our trucks, fix our fleets? I said, well, that'd, be, that'd be great. He said, well, this won't do. You're going to have to uh, build, a, build a whole new building. You think you'd be up to that? He thought, well, this sounds like a good idea. He worked out the agreement with him. Now he's in the process of building about a, a, a 10-car uh, garage out there, something that he never saw in the past or never expected. Uh, well, you're going to see welding being a huge component of these drill rig operations. Again, we have uh, the, the vocational schools here, Zane State. A lot of these people who have already had the training, but they don't have the jobs to satisfy the training. These people are now going to have the jobs that are going to pay the good wages for them to move ahead. Manufacturing. Uh, you saw at Norm's piece, you have some uh, plastic manufacturing that are already looking at here. Uh, so, I mean, this is just the beginning, and these companies have to move in. These well, uh, these well bats have to have parts. Uh, the preparation has to have parts. So you're going to see a lot of the hoses. You're going to see the plastics. You're going to see the fittings. For that. Now, uh, this is nothing new to Burns County. These are the wells drilled that have been drilled in Burns County. Uh, the green ones are active. The red ones are the ones previously drilled. What we've seen so far is about 5,200 uh, wells drilled in Burns County uh, throughout the history. The number of producing wells is about 1,300 now. But what you see currently, and this is just in the past year, you have about 3 trillion cubic feet of natural gas being produced out of Kearns County with 64,000 barrels of crude oil, uh, with about $2 million, $2.5 million in land over oil. So even though this is moving in at a, at, at a rate of faster pace, we are prepared for it because we have seen this for years. And I would be remiss to uh, go through my whole presentation. I know uh, Dr. Brown is talking about workforce development, but I wanted to mention uh, Ron Rita and OG. Uh, they are they are, they are started in 1998. They are essentially the education program for oil and gas industry. They have been training fire uh, departments. They have been going into schools, offering scholarships, uh, giving presentations throughout Ohio. But here recently, they've been working with the local community college, vocational schools, One Stops, Job Ohio, Governor's Office, Board of Regents, OGJFS, and universities to develop a curriculum for this oil and gas boom that we're going to have. And uh, that is very important because, again, we need a steady workforce. We need this workforce to be ready. Now, what they're trying to develop is a curriculum to take kids from vocational school, which is what you have in high school, to maybe you want to take that certificate that you grab there, your, your diploma, and you want to transfer that over to a community college. Well, then you can use those credits. And if you graduate from community college and you just want to go into a four-year institution, you can use that for a four-year institution degree. Uh, and this will prepare our, our workforce down the road and give them Give them, give them actually, you know, ways out. If they have something pop up and they need to move on, they are able to have, to have their certificate, have their curriculum already in place to be able to skip around. And if they want to stay for the four-year institution, get a petroleum engineering degree, they have that option as well. So with that, I will uh, yield my time to, uh, I believe, Dr. Brown is up here. Thank you.